So you want to build a new gaming PC, but you want to wait to buy a graphics card until these prices go down? The brand new Ryzen APUs have some pretty decent built-in graphics, but what if you want to go with Intel? Can you game with an Intel processor without a graphics card? Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be testing out this Intel 8700K to see how much PC gaming you can do without a graphics card. This $150 Ryzen 2400G APU can average about 1080p low to medium settings, so this $330 Intel processor should definitely do better, right? Let's get into it. For today's testing, we're gonna be using my $2,500 gaming PC that I did an entire video on, but we're obviously gonna be taking out that GTX 1080 Ti. Inside of this build, other than the 8700K, is an ASRock Z370 Extreme 4 motherboard, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM, and the games are installed on a 7200 RPM Western Digital Black hard drive. The Intel i7 8700K is rocking a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz, boost up to 4.7 gigahertz, and has an Intel UHD Graphics 630 built in, which is exactly what we're testing today. If you look at Intel's other newer processors from Coffee Lake, such as the i5-8400 or even the budget i3-8100, they are all rocking the exact same UHD Graphics 630. Does this mean that all these processors are going to get the exact same results when gaming? Absolutely not. But what this does mean is that any difference that you see between like an 8700K and an 8400 is purely based off of the CPU processing power and not the built-in graphics. Now you might be asking yourself why it's even worth testing out an 8700K without a graphics card or who would even try PC gaming without a graphics card, but it's actually a very viable option right now. The price of GPUs right now are way too high, especially the higher tier models, so maybe somebody wants to put together a gaming PC and wait for a really good graphics card deal to show up, or maybe even wait until the next generation of graphics cards comes out. What this video today is going to show is if you can game without a graphics card until then. The six games that we're going to be testing are four Fortnite, obviously, CSGO, PUBG, Dota 2, Doom, and the brand new Warhammer Vermintide 2. The settings that you're about to see are the settings that I would personally game at if I actually didn't own a graphics card and only could use my Intel's built-in graphics. First up, we tested the super popular Fortnite, and here I was able to game at 1080p low settings, and I even had to drag the resolution scale down to 44.4%. Here I averaged a somewhat smooth 74 FPS, but you could always drop it down to 720p to get that even higher if you're on a high refresh rate monitor. Next up was CSGO which was a little bit easier to run as I could stay at 1080p low settings with no anti-aliasing and I averaged an 87 frames per second. After that I tested Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and without a graphics card it was pretty rough as you can see. I was only able to get the settings up to 720p and very low plus I only had the resolution scale at 80%. This was definitely pretty ugly to look at and it still only averaged 27 frames per second but hey it still ran I guess. Next up was Dota 2 a game that I personally never play as you can see here with the bots and here I could stay at 1080p and medium settings or that second notch from the left and it was definitely playable at 61 FPS. Moving on to the more graphically demanding games on our list, here is Doom 2016 in 720p low settings. Doesn't look great obviously and I only managed to average 37 frames per second. Doom is a very GPU dependent game so it was absolutely starving by just running on the processor's built in graphics. And finally the last game on our list was Warhammer Vermintide 2 which I actually actually uploaded an entire benchmarking video on it with budget graphics cards, and without a graphics card I averaged 32 FPS with the game at 720p and the lowest settings. So yeah, I really hope you guys weren't expecting much better results. After the release of AMD's Ryzen APUs, I really hope that Intel steps up to the plate and really improves on this. If you're planning on building a gaming PC right now but holding off on the graphics card for later, unless you're only playing those lighter eSport titles like Dota 2 and CSGO, you're not going to have a great time with just an Intel processor. I would personally recommend either going with a Ryzen 2400G or just spend that extra money and get the graphics card right away. Well, that wraps up my review of PC gaming in 2018 without a graphics card. It's definitely still possible, but Intel has been really dropping the ball lately and hopefully this changes. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. Also down there is a link to zaxtechturf.com so you can buy baller t-shirts like this and really support the channel. And as always, thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more Zax Tech Turf videos.